Good afternoon, everyone. Today's webinar is going to be how to run an automation project for VAT, CBCR, and Pillar 1. The webinar is going to be presented by me, Victor Perijuri, and Akash from Signet. Uh, without any further ado, Akash, you may, the floor is yours. Thank you, Victor. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Today, we will be focusing around how do we run an, a complete end-to-end -end automation for ensuring that your uh, text processes are digitized and uh, you are able to cope up with the ever-changing tax laws and the VAT compliances and all of that. And I think the first and foremost point uh, and, and, and when we talk about a technology per se uh, for, for automating the taxation, it has to revolve around data. And when we talk about data, there are multiple sources of information and bringing all of that data into a single platform or a single uh, uh, database as such uh, is, is, I think, the primary goal for any organization. And uh, uh, as far as the data goes, we I would like to highlight here that uh, it's not about having the data into a single place, but also cleaning the data. So uh, data residing into multiple sources would be in different formats and uh, different approaches would have been done onto that. So ensuring that uh, required tools are being used, such as Power BI, Alteryx, uh, there are other data analytics to ensure that uh, the data is reformatted into the right form, as well as cleaning it. Once you have a clean data, then all the other analytics and all the other processes that you want to do onto it uh, to make it compliant as per the government or the tax authorities, will be possible and then taking it to the relevant VAT forms and uh, preparing the XML uh, form or TXT form, different governments, different rules, different mechanisms. But once you have the clean data in place, all of those processes can come in line and uh, follow your digitization uh, roadmap so that the dirty data to digital mailbox, that's what we call it, is achieved. And on to this part, the only, uh, I would say, uh, the next, uh, it's fine. Uh, we can move to the next one, Rosanna. So here, when we are talking of, we have touched based onto data. So I'd like to continue the same discussion and continue the same roadmap uh, for ensuring that uh, your dirty data to the uh, digital dashboard or the digital mailbox is, uh, is achieved. And here we follow an approach that we call the tax compliant car wash approach. And uh, just as you walk into a car wash and uh, you, you go through all the processes which are as a part of that. So instead of uh, the approach that why we are calling it a car wash is because we don't want it to be a, a full-time investment. So you don't, you don't set up your own car wash. You go and take a service of a relevant car wash, which is in the nearby area. So in the similar approach, uh, you must take in the services and the IT and the tech services, which are available and uh, leverage them rather than uh, spending a huge chunk of your time and energy doing all of those things in-house or trying to figure out those things which others have already got an offering out for. And uh, when within a car wash, what, what we say is definitely the first and foremost item that uh, you should be looking at is the structuring of the data. So uh, when, when we say structuring of the data, it is required that from multiple ERPs, or uh, different source systems such as POS or different accounting softwares. The data comes in variety of format and we have seen this in our uh, previous implementations as well, uh, that data forms, I think 80 to 90% of the business challenge or the automation challenge. If that, that particular hiccup is crossed, then the uh, rest of the process becomes very easy and very, uh, how would you say, uh, efficient as a whole. So once the structuring of data has been done, now when we say structuring of the data, we need to analyze what sources you have and what formatting which needs to be done and what sort of targets we are taking at, whether we are looking at uh, real-time reporting, whether we are just looking at uh, uh, return form filing, or we are even looking at uh, 
soft compliance or transfer pricing or corporate income tax so all of that should be considered while you are restructuring the data and then it is about ensuring that the data is pushed into the right forms so this is where the complete end-to-end -end automation is possible where once the data is into the right format uh, there are a variety of tools available into the market uh, which can create the required VAT forms or uh, CBCR reporting forms and all of those additional forms which are required to be filed. And again, once that form is created, that's fair enough and uh, ready for to be reviewed by you and your consultants. But uh, dig different authorities have different formats of accepting the data and most of them have kept XML or JSON. I think mostly it is XML to accept the data. So again, the, the data which was ready in a human readable form in an uh, in, in a UI now needs to be converted into an XML. And that XML needs to be then going to the to the government authorities, which which is different at each case. And here, I think the risk or uh, the highest risk happens uh, in the first two steps only. Once it is converted into XML, uh, the risk is reduced quite a bit because there is no further uh, manipulation or uh, a loss of data possible from a perspective of reporting or filing of the particular returns and uh, once the xml is being uploaded then it needs to be ensured that the relevant uh, authorities portal is being there and there is a direct digital link to it if the digital link is not there then of course you need to have a, a manual intervention there but otherwise I, we have seen most of the governments have got the digital links in place so the XML which gets created can be directly uh, uploaded and then the relevant uh, authorities are being updated accordingly. And at the end, what you have is a full compliance. Now, full compliance does not only mean reporting on time, but it needs to. It means that you have all the uh, reporting being done, whether it is shaft or real time or just a form filing, uh, but as well as have the audit files and other audit readiness in place. So in case uh, for any future audits which uh, which might come in, you have the relevant backups and relevant audit logs so which uh, which can be used and which can be handed over to the to the tax authorities on a very short notice and which would make you not only uh, compliant but even audit ready for any any future purpose and future proofing as such. Now, talking further into our uh, the car wash methodology, the first step that we talked about was uh, ensuring that the data is structured and clean and is ensured in a central location. Uh, this is the process that we are highlighting of uh, how do you clean a data? So uh, it's, it's very easy to see or e even easy to explain as such that, okay, our data, whichever, whether it is your revenue or your expenses, uh, would be having some some uh, issues into it or with with some fields missing. Uh, there would be some formats which are missing. Uh, governments would have released their own data dictionary uh, within which they would have explained or they would have uh, procured that, okay, you need to maintain these 100, 120 fields. Few of them could be mandatory, optional, conditional. A lot of checks are around it. Uh, this is just around the number of fields and uh, the data types which needs to be captured or the completeness. Even after the completeness, there needs to be a, a compliance check or other uh, tax regulation checks as well. We are not even touching that here. It is just about ensuring that at least the bare minimum and the basic data is there for any future purposes, for analytics, for filing, for return purposes, all of that. And here, each and every step is very important because any any gaps in uh, in cleaning of the data or ensuring that the right data is being uh, created or being used, uh, it would mean you know, the all the following processes uh, go go error near there. So if if this step is not done properly, the mapping of the data and the in the completeness of the data is not done, and a proper review at various steps is not done, then the further process of return filing and everything becomes uh, uh, comes under a risk radar. So that's what uh, we recommend as a whole. And again, here, uh, a variety of tools available into the market, right, from Alteryx. Uh, Signet has their own proprietary tools, which, which 
accept a variety of data formats which you can configure your own set of rules uh, what needs to be done and then at the end you have got a clean data which can then be used by a different set of tools all together to prepare the return and file the returns <laughs> excuse me so that's how the overall uh, project execution should start for a text technology or your uh, digitization as such yeah what we see as we see in the slides is the turnkey points for tax and technology and using one single source of data for VAT transfer pricing and DAX six, which is a which is or the data which we consider fits for purpose. Instead of using a siloed approach and extracting data only for VAT transfer pricing or DAX six and cleaning afterwards only for that the specific purpose, companies should aim to use the same data for all purpose once most of the information overlaps. Using a siloed approach creates the risk of having inconsistent data throughout different ancillary obligation and creates the risk of having double and double cleaning of the data. Uh, it is very common within organizations not to have communication between the tax areas, which creates overlap of work and sometimes double cleaning of the data. Currently, what we see a lot is the VAT area, VAT area being the most integrated, especially due to the new requirements of uh, implementing electronic invoices, which already creates by itself the necessity of integration with the ERP system, which allows the, the taxpayer, which can leverage the ERP system to already have the system automatically generating VAT returns for it especially in countries which have the tighter requirements and it requires full disclosure of every transaction and this can only be done by ERPs. The, the aim is to have a, a single system which allows the extraction of, single, uh, of clean data in one single source. Imagine a system which would allow, it would allow you to do a VAT analysis and you would simply check the box for VAT that this analysis is to VAT and it will give you fit for purpose data. And afterwards you would use the same system to tick the box and receive information of only intercompany data. If that already seems a huge step for your organization, already sharing, sharing pre and files within Excel already helps you to ensure consistent ancillary obligation within jurisdictions and also reduce the time loss on treating the data. Uh, therefore, we, we uh, see the integrated data as the only way forward to manage your next, the, next, the next area of compliance, especially with the implementation of Pillar 2 we see as having one integrated source to manage the, the tax rate, the effective tax rate of 15% is going to be implemented the only way to be able, for a company to be able to comply with these new requirements. Next slide, please, Rosan. Thank you. This, this slide follows the same logic that me and uh, Akash are mentioning all using the clean data and we're using one source to have the CBCR being followed by you. So you will use the clean the clean data which the which would be filled and taxed and tested on an XML converter and you will be received receiving the table of the XML of the XML of the CBCR in your mailbox which you could be able to check yourself. And uh, instead of do uh, instead of checking before sending to the XML be to be filed, you would do the opposite and let the system do the first part, and you you act as only reviewing. Afterwards, after validating this, you would be convert to XML back again and sent for the compliance cycle, and the, the compliance cycle of the CBCR would already be done. Uh, next slide, please. I think here we are talking about, so as Victor rightly highlighted, having a single source uh, for the data. So the most important step becomes getting your data from different sources or different applications onto a single platform or a single data warehouse. 
and uh, that's where the integration approaches uh, plays a primary role now this is more uh, a technology related uh, uh, term which you might uh, be aware that okay integration is important api rpa ftp database all of these terms might seem uh, quite uh, technical terms but in in simple words it is uh, these are the different mechanisms which can be used by it teams uh, within the organization or even uh, outside consultants can use to get the data extract the data from any type of source so uh, if we cover all of these parts generally there is no source system uh, which would remain uh, untouched or which which would have anything uh, which cannot be integrated and technically it is about getting the data from the source system so whether that source exposes an api uh, great it can be used but if it is not possible then file based or even direct database level integration is also possible and if nothing of that sort of things works then uh, rpa is definitely there and we have got variety of proprietary tools which can do that to give an example there are some cases where uh, the custom uh, authorities are not giving or not having the right format of export then in those cases these rpa bots can actually log in and scrap the data off the custom portals or any any of those uh, such portals from where the information can then be further used and uh, this this will definitely be uh, uh, helping out and ensuring that nothing is left out from a compliance data perspective so the data completeness which is one of the primary goals is always achieved uh, on onto the this and few of the primary uh, things which uh, we would like to highlight here is uh, that ensuring we connect to all the database or we connect to the right apis and then have variety of uh, options available so whenever you are in the market looking for uh, automating your complete text to text process and the steps which are involved uh, ensure that you are looking at all of these as as the approaches or as a flexibility across the across the overall execution uh, such that uh, the the tool is allowing uh, the uploading FTP connections, uh, mapping of the Excel database. And uh, even the scheduler and controlling of all of these uh, uh, data sync should also be there so that uh, uh, it can be scheduled to either run at a fast pace or at a long inter intermediate as well as uh, it is very important to have a proper monitoring uh, processes in place to ensure that um, if there is a data sync or integration happening on a daily basis, uh, the jobs are not missed and the data is not getting lost into the oral transmission, as well as having various reconciliation uh, such that which can help uh, the tax teams and IT teams determine that all of the data is flowing. So having reports from the source data as well as from the target data and having a dashboard created out of which which can easily uh, replicate or which can easily highlight if uh, the date, number of lines which are flowing or the overall amount of the data which is flowing if it is in line or there is anything out of sync into the overall integration process. And uh, the overall architecture generally looks like this. And uh, we have got quite a lot of experience in creating such architectures, depending upon what your ERP or so systems are, what level of infrastructure there is, and where we need to take the data to. So this is just one example of it, where, uh, where we are getting data from are about four or five sources. Uh, we have got our own uh, ETL tool, which is called DataViz Extraction. Uh, which is being installed onto the onto the premises and which connects to the various database and has some RPA capabilities to get the data. And using that, it it connects to our own uh, file based utility, which then can give the data to practically any any software or any tool uh, which has internet connectivity. Uh, here we have used our own um, uh, server utility, which 
which then performs the uh, sending of the data to the tax authorities through mails and through XML forms and etc. And ideally, we definitely recommend uh, having dedicated sessions uh, with uh, with uh, TPA and our team to to explain your uh, specific tax problems as well as your architecture that is currently there. And then we can uh, create a very bespoke uh, overall tax technology architecture for for your premises or for your applications as such. And that becomes a uh, like a stepping stone into the overall automation process that you are trying to do. Um, here we are talking about some of the existing challenges uh, which are per pertaining to the VAT compliances. So we have touched based on to how the overall text technology architecture should be automated. Uh, but what should be the objectives that you should be looking at while you are doing the automation project? Definitely there will be some, uh, some primary problems or primary pains which are required to be resolved, as well as there would be some uh, organization specific challenges as well. But in general, uh, they generally falls into these buckets where First and foremost, of course, it's data. Uh, we have already talked about it, having merging and managing lots of data. And other is about the how the organization structure is being in place. So if you consider these, then it is like the first problem is, of course, around data. The second is about the people and the processes. So in people, how the overall organization structure is being there and how the allocation of uh, responsibilities and all of those uh, that comes into picture. And then comes the process where uh, the VAT calculation and the adjustment process, how it is being taken care, what are the process being followed, and, uh, and the authorities related changes or there are any compliance related impact which needs to be considered and all of that. And lastly, it is about MIS. So how, what sort of dashboards and what sort of uh, information that uh, need, is required um, by various tax heads and the compliance heads to ensure that uh, as an organization, it has been compliant at all, all positions. So those are the very high level challenges that we have tried to identify. And when we work on any solution, these are definitely covered in that, apart from any, any specific challenges that uh, our organization might have. <clears throat> And uh, I think this one architecture diagram shows it all. And uh, whether we talk about uh, data or uh, whether we talk about MIS, uh, it, it covers almost everything. So we call it the building block architecture. And ideally, uh, you can uh, this becomes the Lego block or the overall uh, how the uh, end, end system comes into, into play. So it starts with the source, uh, whether it is internal or external, where the data needs to be pulled from, and then picking the right integration platforms uh, depending upon those sources, and then taking the data to the relevant uh, places, whether it is a data warehouse or a text data lake or any of the other internal database which is required, and then doing all of the data preparation and processing onto it. So we have mentioned data massaging or compliance validation, but they are just a small piece onto the overall data preparation exercise which might be needed and uh, of course uh, running all the intelligence and the analytics which could be on tax determination it could be real-time reporting it could be your uh, rule engine all of that and then comes the actual reporting to the authorities of preparation of tax returns or real-time reporting which is also known as invoicing or any other audits and MIS uh, reports which are required uh, for a complete reporting uh, purpose. Again, now once the uh, source to reporting is achieved, uh, then it is definitely recommended to look at the add-ons uh, such as uh, bots or uh, OCR, which can even automate the last manual processes or the tiny manual processes which are around. So if there are any uh, AP related items which are being currently manually punched in or managed. Uh, OCR could definitely be a great addition which automates that process 
so all the vendor and the purchase and uh, whole of that process can be automated and there are various tools available in the market uh, which can help for that as well and uh, then with the introduction of e-invoicing the invoice verification also becomes very important so that uh, you can ensure that the, the invoice that the vendor has provided to you has is cleared by the government is cleared by the tax authorities and then only you make the payments onto it because until and unless it's a fair e-invoice uh, which is already approved by the government uh, chances of you taking the input credit onto it becomes very less so definitely uh, verifying of uh, all the purchase invoices becomes important uh, in all regions where there are real-time reporting or invoicing in place. So those are the small bits uh, which, which can be added once the overall architecture is in place. And those uh, uh, small manual processes can be ironed out and a complete end-to-end -end automation can be achieved there. Now uh, we we would like to talk about um, uh, application or a tool here which uh, which can help you automate your VAT compliances. So what we have done so far is uh, we have discussed uh, the key challenges which are around data, which is around uh, complex processes or could be related to any business purpose processes as such. And uh, as a whole, once you have uh, the data in place or once you have the text technology architecture in place, uh, it's definitely to invest. Uh, it's good to invest in a tool which can help uh, manage your returns. So technically, which will automate and uh, prepare a ready to file returns which can be uh, shared with the authorities and can be provided to the authorities and um, it, it reduces your manual intervention as well as the manual dependency uh, by quite a few and uh, apart from there uh, there could be also reclaims uh, under the 8th and 13th directive uh, which needs to be done so all your refunds and uh, depending upon uh, how much operations are across the Europe for organization this uh, could differ and uh, definitely could add a lot of value to organizations having a large amount of travels across. And lastly, it is about having the e-commerce data. So currently, whether we talk about Amazon or eBay, uh, the tax reports which have been provided from those uh, platforms are very hard to crack on and uh, understand and use to file the returns. So there also we have tried to automate the bits where it can accept, we accept the data as it is provided by, by these uh, uh, e-commerce platforms and then are converted or diced and sliced into the relevant uh, different formats which can be used uh, for different countries reporting within the Europe. And it can also help in the IOSS and OSS reporting as well. So as a whole, this can give a, a lot of value from the automation perspective and uh, uh, have, having a complete end-to-end uh, -end picture from uh, a data to return filing at least. And then once it is filed, then you have the digital mailbox in place. So the dirty data to digital ma mailbox, that's how we are planning or we are suggesting as an overall flow from end-to-end -end, uh, for the execution. And uh, shortly, we will also show you how the product looks and uh, how, how the overall features of uh, that particular platform are. And maybe before that, uh, we can uh, run a short poll. If uh, Rosanna, you can do that one. Yeah, the purpose of this poll is to, um, for you as organization, to tell us what's your opinion on the, what is the biggest challenge to implement an integrated approach or even implementing any sort of tax and technology feature in your organization. And to vote, I believe you just need to click on one of the buttons on the screen. Okay. So we have a, a tie here. And the, the, on, the only obstacle seems not to be the technology, but the people 
by people, I believe, is for people to embrace the technology and embrace the, the new tool. And also for management, I believe, and sometimes it takes higher decision to, to implement the tool and sometimes it's a costly procedure to have a whole integration, which is not the, not the option or priority at the moment. And uh, all of the above. Should, should we continue Akash or do another pool or leave it to the end? Uh, we can we can go through probably uh, should we talk about the text technology curriculum as well and uh, then I can show the uh, the quick demo of uh, of the application. Yeah, that, that would be that would be a good idea. So uh, here, what we are trying to uh, showcase is a, a text technology curriculum. Uh, it's an it's a course that we are suggesting and. and I think eBright and along with TPA and along with Signet, we all are involved in ensuring and enabling all the uh, text teams to have a proper technology arm as well. And uh, this is a high level curriculum that we have planned across and uh, we will be rolling out the, uh, the, uh, the course very soon and which would definitely be uh, like one of the key courses which you should be looking at uh, uh, achieving in 2022 as as tech, tech, text technology becomes a very uh, norm into into the various organizations. Okay, probably uh, uh, Zana, I would like to share my screen now. So, and give me one minute. I'll quickly. Okay, so this is the portal that uh, I was talking about when we say a complete end-to-end -end automation. So the product that we have got here, uh, which which we are talking about, has got uh, mainly mainly three features. So let's just quick, quickly look at it. As soon as uh, a person logs in, he, he gets an option. So whether what are we trying to do today, whether we are trying to create returns or whether we are trying to decode Amazon data or are we focusing on any reclaim uh, aspects as such. And then there are other organization setup and settings uh, and under the principal management. And even the VAT codes and all of that are also managed here. So the whole application runs through VAT codes and uh, it has it can have custom VAT code mapping as well. So depending upon what sort of uh, VAT codes is present into the data, uh, that can be configured here. And accordingly, they are taken onto the returns page. Uh, now talking specifically about the returns uh, application as a whole, uh, here what we have got is before any organization can jump and create a return, it is uh, recommended to map the VAT codes. But since I'm giving a short demo, I've already done that. So I'll quickly jump on to preparation of VAT returns. And uh, here we, had, uh, we have kept provision of uh, VAT automation or uh, VAT return preparation for all of the countries within EU region, including UK. And uh, some of these countries could be active for your organization. Some of these uh, could be available to add, which you can uh, add as per the business needs. Uh, for a quick demo, I'll select uh, probably uh, France. And uh, as soon as I click on a country, uh, the product will ask me to upload a data. For, uh, for just a demo purpose, I'm going to use a manual upload. Uh, but all of this process can be very easily automated and uh, it, it, the whole process can be a complete end-to-end -end, uh, process. And now quickly select a file to upload the data as such. So uh, the file that I'm trying to upload here will is a SAP-based uh, file and our system will uh, map the file will upload the file and if there are any extra columns or extra fields onto the file which is not properly mapped uh, then 
it will highlight them as warnings and errors so here we have got a couple of errors so the red one says uh, well there is an error here uh, the orange ones are warning so we follow the traffic light uh, uh, methods here and if everything would have been good it would have been green so a user can quickly just within the process itself uh, try to map those additional two columns and uh, can identify that okay what which values to pick from and uh, it's as simple as that so once you're finished mapping uh, the tool automatically will rerun the file and ensure that uh, proper data is now available so what what the system does is it or avoids you to uh, send inconsistent information or missing information that's correct yep yep exactly exactly um, and here we even validate uh, the the validation is run on the full data to ensure that all the required fields from the authorities are available as well as are into the right data format. And okay. even some of the compliance checks are being also done onto the application. It, they are not as extensive as a human compliance check, uh, but we are also looking at AI enablement where it can even uh, get to a level where uh, it, it covers almost 80 to 90 percent of the compliance checks which are out there exactly who is always to demonize the the manual checks from a human correct correct so uh even a, what, what we recommend is once the product has checked all the data and the return is ready it's uh, it's recommended to have a quick look uh, from a business perspective as such uh, just to ensure that uh, right, uh, right amount of data, and there are any no no analogies of uh, of larger uh, amounts anywhere, uh, just to ensure, and then you are good to go. So here, what has happened is uh, the tool has analyzed the file, it has processed it, and uh, the returns are now ready, as well as the uh, the uh, the three three one zero file is ready for submission as well, uh, which is applicable in France, and there are some manual adjustments available which you can do so i'll click on show returns and here what we look at are um, the return format so if we look at all it shows the full return of, of france and uh, it this is the re reduced version which is having value only in the relevant boxes and advantage of using automation is that okay any number that you see you can always uh, click and drill down onto those numbers to ensure the right a uh, set of transactions are being used or right set of data is being used uh, in, in the preparation of that particular box or the preparation of that particular return. So that, that always gives a peace of mind that whatever is data is being filed is fair enough and the return which is prepared is in line. And this return can be printed or exported uh, as well as the the other file which is required uh, the xml file is practically ready for download and it can be downloaded and uh, can be sent on to the government authorities so that's uh, that's how simple it is from getting uh, a data to a return ready format it's it's just ensuring that the data is converted into the right format and then uh, tool takes care of the rest of the items and uh, we even have the tools which can help you in the data conversion or uh, cleaning of the data and all of that. So that's that's one of the approach of looking at it of, um, of completing. This is just one short demo of a, a tool which can help you do that. And probably now even uh, we can have the uh, next poll of the session as well and then we can uh, probably open for questions now. Yeah. Okay, the result the result is may uh, most of our participants is using a siloed approach, which is uh, very common on the um, 
on the companies nowadays too. And uh, what what do we think is the um, the use of the VAT? The VAT regulations uh, in terms of automation are speeding up and uh, obliging taxpayers to have already automated data and ready fit for purpose data available. Uh, and uh, and tip for for the companies to to have one integrated approach is to use the the regulations from VAT and ready to speed up your process and already. But since you're already implementing a tool that would uh, assist you with the VAT, why not trying to integrate all, all the all the ancillary obligations into one, which would include the VAT, um, transfer pricing data, and tax six if possible, and now upcoming for for the tax rates, effective tax rates into pillar two. Well, what do you think of us, Akash? Yes, and I think. Uh, this is where uh, a lot of rework might go in for organization um, uh, if they are having such approaches. So, uh, you know, one, they might solve a problem at a different place in a different way and the same problem somebody else would be solving in a, in a different way. So rather than centralizing and solving the whole uh, process and, uh, and the complete uh, problem in a, in a single go. So there are, there are two ways of uh, going at it. I think that's that's how it should be taken forward. Yeah. Well, well the result is that uh, apparently all the companies is using a blended approach so far. So it, it, uh -huh. it's either a siloed approach or an integrated approach. I think we will see this number changing in the uh, in the coming years. Absolutely. I think that's that's the where uh, where the energy should be going for the organizations right now. And, uh, and and taking things forward from from an uh, automation or a technology implementation perspective. Exactly. And one of the most important parts now is to have consistent data within your whole organization, meaning that uh, the, the, there should be no discrepancy between local, local data and uh, the centralized data on the principal, especially for, okay. for VT purposes they, in countries such as Brazil, Cross check so to see consistency within the VAT and CIT is already happening. So it's really important for you to register in both ends in all auxiliary obligation correctly. Imagine a scenario which uh, we sell ten goods for for one of your related parties, but then the other related parties only outputs nine of these goods. The city area obligation would be already possible to cross check this one of one good that is missing. Correct. Which means that uh, it's not sometimes due to bad faith or doing it on purpose, but, lack, but rather a system. And uh, having a consistent city area obligation is crucial in these times where cross checks are already happening. Exactly. I think, and uh, more and more authorities are going towards that uh, uh, approach of uh, ensuring that everything is cross-checked or at least double-checked. So, what you, what as an organization you are uploading or pushing to the government, uh, they will even be checking your vendors' data and even your customers' data to to ensure that everything is matching and reconciling accordingly. Exactly. In this customer part, is indeed really important because. Because the, the customer who sold it to you should as well declare the same amount and the same quantity and description that you exactly. did, and the same for the person before. And uh, this can be traced uh, infinitely, and it's indeed a really good point. Yes, yes. Okay. Do, do any of you guys uh, have any questions? I think. I think we should have created a pool as well for questions, right? Yes, there no. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think there's a chat box where uh, you guys can put in uh, your questions if there are any. Uh, it's right yeah. easy. If you if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach us out via email. We will share our email of TPA in a cache. We will be happy to answer our questions afterwards. It was a, a pleasure to have you guys here today. And um, again, please feel free to contact us in case you have any questions. It was a pleasure to have you all to here today.
Akash, thank you very much for your participation and your, and your great presentation and very detailed explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, TPA, for hosting this one. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.